Natasha Gimbala will bring the work of Lala Ruth to us. Natasha is uh, one of the curators of the exhibition, curatorial advisor for this exhibition, and is also a very well-known curator and friend. So Natasha, please. Um, thank you so much. That's a, that's a big act to follow on. Thank you, Jack. That was wonderful. Um, last evening, um, we, while delving into the strategy of joy, um, we also reckoned with the fact that there is always space for loss and recognition. And on the one hand, for lives that were made invisible as part of endemic systemic failures of Western democracy and capitalism's death drive as Elizabeth Lebovici and Guillermo um, uh, Gomez Pena um, shared with us in their own way. And on the other, uh, to sustain joy, um, as Paul has said, in remembering those lives which continue to resonate for us collectively as key voices within Documenta 14, and we're lucky in both cities, so Athens and Kassel. I was very pleased also when this invitation came from Paul um, to address Lala Rook. Um, since it was just a few weeks ago, a memorial gathering organized by a collective for feminist conversations, which um, was organized uh, specifically with uh, Subha Vijay Sirivardhane and, um, and, and other uh, young women in the city, but also by prominent feminists of the Women in Media Collective in Colombo, who, who have been since 1984 committed to South Asian feminisms and with whom Lala uh, collaborated closely, um, carrying out workshops on poster making and sharing her first-hand experiences with uh, street activism and sustained fights um, against the anti-women laws instituted in Pakistan. So it was actually um, during a groundbreaking workshop in Quetta in Bangladesh um, in March 1986 that 38 women from across South Asia could assemble for what has been remarked upon as the first significant South Asian feminist encounter. And it was during this gathering that Lala met uh, members of the Women in Media Collective, um, such as Kumudini Samuel, Amrita Chachi, Sunila Abesikara. These names may not be familiar to you, but this is also a way of introducing you to these um, wonderful women, very strong um, network of women um, that came alive uh, uh, through the, uh, the Women's Action Forum in, in, in Pakistan, um, but then, and, and the Women and Media Collective, but several others as well in the region. And we are now in the process of also thinking through perhaps what to do with this um, legacy and what to do um, in pursuing those conversations today. Um, so that particular uh, March 1986 meeting was also, um, just to mention, a time when um, women in uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan were able to reconcile with some of the, uh, the killings and the rapes that had taken place um, bet as encounters between the Pakistani army and um, and the women of Bangladesh during the liberation war. So you know these are these were these meetings were sort of extremely key, um, and their influence continues. And there's this um, this uh, iconic poster um, in in uh, the documenta Halla, um, which is called the Unholy Trinity: Men, Money, and mora Morality. And um, that also uh, was made. Uh, during during the meeting and uh, the workshop in Quetta. So there's a bit of that in Kassel too uh, with us. But I'm going to, this is sort of, it's personal, but it's also a way for me to share with you a little bit about the work Rupak, um, which was commissioned um, uh, by Documenta 14 Athens, uh, because many of you may not have also gotten to see that, or perhaps, I mean, I also haven't had the chance to write on it before, so this was an opportunity. So when meeting Lala for the first time during um, a visit, uh, during a workshop and symposium that I was doing in Lahore, 
We spent a lot of time um, discussing her year's teaching um, at the National College of Arts. She is one of many teachers um, in Documenta 40 and many, many artist pedagogues, and I will talk about another this, later this evening. So she first chose to talk about her teaching, her students, um, and only slowly moved into showing me the screen printed posters that hung on her walls and the, sh and the friendships and collaborations that she made along the way as part of the Women's Action Forum. And so an informal history came alive for me in her living room. However, it was only towards the end of that first meeting that Lala somewhat reluctantly brought out um, the drawing series um, Nightscape from a storage unit under her staircase. It became apparent how the drawing was a visual testimony on the essential role of subtraction in pictorial language and of the counterpoint as a subjective means to interpret motion between the one and the many. These minimalist drawings appeared as though the paper surface had become prone to a kinetic gradient, much like the sea of vibrations received upon the stretched skin of a tabla. She then chuckled, stating, when traveling with these through Dubai security check, the airport personnel insisted on me unpacking the drawings, and they were taken by surprise and struggling to locate the obscured graphite lines on carbon paper. So this is sort of one such drawing um, uh, which we had shown in, in, in Athens, which actually represents also uh, a melodic structure um, using calligraphic technique and minimalist uh, composition. Soon after inviting Lala for a preparatory visit to Athens and Kassel, she was devastated by the imminent loss of her studio in Old Lahore, a historical building built in 1908 at the hands of the railroad work by the Punjab government. So despite, so there's, there's the struggles at the kind of level of, the, um, of, of feminism and the, and, and, the, and the women's collective, but there's also these personal struggles that, um, that she endured as, as a vigilant citizen of, of Lahore and, and, and of trying to preserve its historic architecture. And this was something that she also suffered then personally when she lost her studio. And so there was something quite significant about her then being able to come to, uh, to, come to Athens and um, be introduced to the Odeon, um, the music conservatory, which she, she and I both actually gravitated towards in order to stage her work amidst many others that also use the language of rhythm and sonority, of scores and of deep listening as practiced by the composer Pauline Oliveros, who, who we'll also remember tomorrow. And so in the circular space within the nave of this building, Lala's meticulous production, Rupak, took as its starting point the Rupak Tal, which bears a seven beat structure with three divisions and recorded as a tabla composition with Sunny Justin. Lala proceeded then to conduct her form of riyaz, daily practice, in an exercise of serial drawings, which she initially called templates. The vertical lines for her calligraphy training were a score sheet to mark the beat structure in close listening, which went on over several weeks. Rupak, as a result, is a hypnotic and layered work. The hairline strokes maintain the micro pulse and together echo as a, bright, uh, as a breath cycle. When watching the final outcome, the viewer's breath too becomes attuned to these minute counts of the tabla rhythm and its visual mapping. Lala had wished to move from drawing into animation and it was through this work that she manifested th this desire it became a quietly fiery devotional labor carried out under personal circumstances of extreme pain. Now I can't help thinking back to the breathing trouble she was experiencing at the time, an internal heaviness that was erratic and constricting, a time when she moved freely though in the space of drawing. The dropping of oxygen levels is another sort of bodily score, and she remained vigilant 
to this most personal accounting. Much earlier, she had chosen, when her mother um, was dying, to use her ECG um, to make the work Hardscape as a collage score bearing the tonality of that loss and separation. Across the 88 drawings of Rupak, some of which that you see here, her stroke remained still and full of conviction. So this hand-drawn graphic score is then further constructed into animation form. The paper surface gives over to the screen, which you don't see, but that's the other part that's facing, the screen is facing um, the drawings. And from its blackness, the tal radiates once again as units of light and energetic, energetic syncopated time. Another um, thing to mention was uh, how special it was for Lala to meet artists from South Asia um, freely. And this, again, is just something uh, specific I'd like to mention because of that commitment to South Asian feminism and what it meant to deal with the partitions, the war uh, between, between this, in this, um, in this um, region and, and, and its continuing geopolitical tensions. Um, the fact is that right now, um, it's the, the visa regime is at its worst with uh, Indian and Pakistani citizens not able to uh, meet each other to cross the border. And so in fact, um, the time of Documenta 14 in Athens um, became a moment for her to be introduced to several artists of the region and of course of the world. Um, and, 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 and many of the, and, and the sort of uh, friendship that was formed also meant that um, even before, uh, during the installation period, they, the, the artists would sort of walk around and, and see each other's work and, and, and preview each other's work, um, encourage one another before sort of the real audience came in. And I, I distinctly recall the sense of collaborative joy that, um, that, that this brought, um, brought them all. It was after this, and during the installation period during Kassel, that Lala found out about her illness. She, um, she discovered uh, that she was, in the last, had the la uh, was having to face cancer um, in its last stage. Um, and I wasn't sure whether to share this, but then I, I, I felt it was also important that actually when the doctor mentioned to her that, that there would be no possibility of any kind of um, intensive medication even, but just sort of a sort of period of waiting actually, um, she was quite calm and said that in fact, when she completed her work in Athens and saw it come alive, she did feel that it would be her last. Um, and that was, that was something I heard um, very recently when meeting uh, her with her family, who was also at the memorial in, uh, in Colombo. And there is a phrase in Aimé Césaire's poem, The Miraculous Weapons, which stayed with me in comprehending the emblematic role of listening and waiting to one's time as a cyclical function, as Lala did, which is, my years against the ground, I heard tomorrow pass. There are many questions that one still seeks to ask her. How to remain unfettered, even while evolving an ecology of personal ethics honed by common urgency. Again, while meeting Lala's sister Gul uh, Rook in Colombo, she told me that one of her favorite activities was flying kites on her home terrace. And I think of this scene now um, of the thread that we call manja, that ties the kite and the kite plier, which, which must, at one point or another, surrender to the wind currents, to chance, to being cut off. And perhaps in this too, there is a scaling of joy. Um, I'm going to now um, request that we play uh, a few minutes of music, because that was actually uh, one, the second half of this memorial, it wasn't about talking, and I'd, I'd like to keep, keep to that structure, um, where Haider Rahman, uh, Lala's nephew, played the flute, um, and Hanya Lutufi uh, sang on vocals. Maheni me kinu akha, 
which is uh, a short Sufi poem, which is called Kafi, um, by the 16th century Punjabi Sufi poet Shah Hussain, um, who used to, who, who fell in love with a Hindu boy who was called Madho. And from then on, they had a, a kind of, a, a kind of conflated name of Madho Lal Hussain. And um, in Lahore, where there is the shrine of uh, Shah Hussain, there is also the, the, the tomb of, um, of Madho. And uh, this was a place that Lala uh, visited with, uh, with some of her friends and her fellow students. So on that note.
Thank you so much, uh, Natasha, and I, I, I really feel as well privileged to have had the, the chance of uh, meeting Lala Ruth. Uh, even if she was in her 60s, I could say that she uh, still embody the energy of the revolutionary young girl that uh, Harveston was speaking about before, really. So thank you for like uh, speaking about her t tonight.